All right, welcome to part four, the final part of the weapon system tutorial. And this one, really the only thing we're going to be focusing on is making it so you can shoot the guns and making it so that a little animation plays on the character whenever you uh, do shoot the gun. So to do that, we'll go into the character and right click and say uh, input action fire so that we're notified when the player elects to fire the gun. And let me go to my code so I can reference it. Okay, so when the player elects to fire the gun, um, we want to make sure that a couple things are true. We want to make sure that he actually has a gun in his hands. So to do that, we'll drag in the equipped gun. And if this is valid, pin continues to execute, then we know that it's good to go. And we also want to make sure that he is uh, aiming down sights, because we only want him to be able to fire if he's aiming down the sights. So we'll say get aim button down, do a branch off of that. And we'll cut up. And if all this is true and everything's good to go, then we want to essentially just drag off this gun right here and say fire, right? Um, but there is no fire function yet, so we're going to have to write one of those real quick. So let's go to the BP gun class. And over here on the left, we'll make a new function called fire. And we'll move it to the public section. So if you think about it, the direction that we want him to fire is really based off of where the camera is looking, not so much where the gun is facing, um, because the gun is going to be moving around a little bit based on the animations. We really don't want to base it off of that. Uh, we really want to base it on where the camera is facing, uh, more, so, more so than anything else. So to do that, we're going to take in the player's camera into this function so that we'll know where to fire the bullet, like in which direction to fire the bullet. So add a parameter, an input parameter, and the type is going to be a camera component uh, object reference. And this is the player's camera, so player camera. So really, it just comes down to doing a little bit of math to figure out what direction we want to fire the bullet at. And you can maybe implement it differently in your game if you want to do it slightly different. I think it's implemented differently in different games. But the way I'm going to do it is, essentially it's just going to fire in a straight line um, from the barrel of the gun into the direction of the camera. So we'll say get world location uh, of this camera, and we also want to get the forward vector of the camera so we know which direction to fire it at. And we'll take the forward vector and we'll multiply it by some large value. So this is essentially going to be uh, how far into the world the bullet will be aimed into hitting. It's kind of like zeroing in the the bullet more or less and so if we add that so if we do a vector if we do a vector add uh, this value right here is going to be the location um, from the camera into the world this many units so this is where the bullet's going to be um, aiming at essentially like where it's going to end up But we don't want the bullet to spawn at the camera, we want it to spawn at the gun's location. So to do that, we need to get the location of the barrel of the gun. So if we drag in the skeletal mesh, which again is the gun, and we say get socket location, um, we want to get the socket for the barrel. And I believe all of these guns have a socket there. So if we go back, uh, if we click on the skeletal mesh, oh, I guess that's not going to work. And we go back here and we go to the FPS weapon bundle, and we go to the weapons, and meshes, and look at one of these, it doesn't really matter which one, as long as it's one of the ones we're using. So I'm just going to open up this skar 4 underscore x and if you look at the skeleton uh, on the left here, you can see it has a b underscore gun muzzle flash, and this is a bone, and it's right at the tip of the gun, so we want to use this one, and this is the location we're going to spawn the bullet at. So let's go ahead and copy the selected bone names, just so we can, we don't accidentally type it wrong. And if we go back to the gun, uh, BP gun, we can paste that right here. So that's going to get us the world location of the barrel. And if we go ahead and we subtract these, it's going to give us a vector from the barrel to the location we're trying to shoot. And if we normalize that, it's going to give us a normalized vector, which is essentially just a direction. So now we have a direction, this is essentially a direction from the barrel uh, into the world in the direction we want to shoot. And then to determine how far we want it to shoot, or not how far we want it to shoot, but um, 
the velocity, we can multiply it by whatever we want the velocity of the bullet to be. So you could very easily make a function very similar to how we did this called get velocity, and then the guns could return their own velocity. But I'm just going to keep it simple and say they all have the same velocity and just you know hard code it to like 10,000 or something. But obviously you can change it to be whatever you want. Um, so now we have the velocity and we know where we want the bullet to spawn at. So we can go ahead and say spawn actor from class. And we don't actually have an actor to spawn yet because we need to spawn a bullet. Um, we don't want to actually have a bullet actor yet. So let's go ahead and just create one of those, a really simple bullet class real quick. So if we come back here, um, I'm not sure where to put this. Maybe I'll just make a new folder here in a content directory and call it bullet. And inside of here, make a new blueprint of type actor and call it bp underscore bullet. All right, so this is gonna be a pretty simple class. Um, the main thing we wanna do here is we want to add two things. We wanna add a sphere collision, and this is gonna be used to detect collision on the bullet to figure, figure out if it hit something. And the other thing we want is a static mesh. Now you may or may not want this in your game. The static mesh is gonna represent the geometry of the bullet itself, um, but a lot of games like you know Call of Duty or something, you don't. There is no bullet. Like you can't actually see the bullet. I don't think there's any physical representation of the bullet. It's just, you know, they're too small to see, so they don't even try to render them. But I'm gonna have one just so we can see it to see it's working. But if you don't want to have a physical representation of your bullet, then you don't need this static mesh. Um, so go ahead and drag the static mesh onto the sphere, so it's a child of the sphere. And we also want to replace the default scene root with our sphere. So just drag it on there, and it will replace it. So now our sphere is our scene root. And the reason we want to do that is because we're gonna go up here and we're gonna add a projectile movement component and when you add a projectile movement component it looks at whatever is your root and that's the thing it uses um, to simulate as a projectile so we want it to be the sphere that it simulates okay so now we have a sphere we have our static mesh we need to set our static mesh to something just so we can see it uh, I'm gonna search for some sphere and just give it some random sphere that's obviously too big Let's say like 0 0.05 for the scale 0.05 and 0.05 that looks a little better and then we can maybe scale this down to like 16 or something like that so we'll just say that this is our bullet and the only thing we really need to do here is in the event graph um, we can delete all this stuff we want to say when it hits something we would just want to destroy the bullet so if right click on this and say add event and say on component begin overlap and if we drag off of this actor we can say destroy actor and I'm also going to add a little print string here before this actually just so we can see it's working uh, just say destroyed Oops. just kind of for debugging something like that okay so now whenever it hits a wall or something it's going to get destroyed and the very last thing we want to do is we want to be able to um, when somebody creates a bullet, we want them to be able to specify the velocity of the bullet. So we're going to make a variable and expose it. So create a variable, call it velocity, that's of type vector. And you can select instance editable and expose on spawn. You can also select blueprint read only in private if you want, since nobody else needs access to it. And in the begin play, which I deleted on accident, so say event begin play, let's go ahead and add that back. So on the begin play, we want to set the projectile movement's velocity to whatever velocity the person who made this bullet specified. So drag in the projectile movement and say set velocity. And we want to set it to the velocity that was exposed on spawn. So now we have our bullet. And if we go back to, where were we? Our gun, yeah, our BB gun. Oh, hold on, I have to sneeze. Okay, sorry about that. So, we go back to our BP gun, and we're now spawning our actor. We can set it to BP underscore bullet. Set it as the actor we want to spawn. And let's go ahead and hook that up, like so. And if we split this transform, let's go ahead and do that so we can get access to all the things inside of it. So the location of the bullet that we want to spawn at is the barrel of the gun which is this guy, so drag this over here. I'm just gonna make it a little cleaner, something like this. And you can also see it's exposed our velocity since we see it exposed on spawn and we can hook that up like so. 
So now that our bullet is spawned, um, should be really all we need to do with that. Um, let's just make sure we're calling fire somewhere. So let's go back to our character. And in the input action fire, where you said that the aim button is down, we actually have something equipped. So we can say fire, pick up this valid. And it wants the player camera, so we'll give it our camera, like so. Now if we compile, save, and we run this, if I go and I pick up a gun, if I try to fire and I'm not aiming down sights, you can see it doesn't work. If I aim down sights and I fire, you can see uh, something is happening. It looks like the bullet is getting destroyed immediately for some reason. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out why it's getting destroyed immediately. Uh, OK, so I figured out the problem. So inside of the BP bullet blueprint, um, we need to make sure that the static mesh has a collision preset of no collision, because we don't want that to collide with anything. Uh, and one other thing I realized I did wrong is we don't actually want to connect this, um, because that was destroying the actor it hit. We want to destroy the actor itself, which is the bullet. So if we go ahead and we run this, um, and we try to shoot a gun, it won't appear to be working, but it actually is working. You just can't really see the bullets unless you do this, because the camera is directly behind the player. So let's just go ahead and move the camera a little bit to the side so we can actually see the bullets that we're shooting. So let's drag the camera over here a little bit. Maybe bring it in, bring it up. You can play around with the camera however much you want. So now we can actually see the bullets. And you can see they come out of the barrel of the gun and the direction of the camera. And it looks pretty solid. Um, one thing you'll probably note is that he's not, uh, or it's not actually printing bullet destroyed when the bullets are hitting the walls. And it's actually because they're going through the walls. And the reason they're going through the walls is because in order for that overlap event to get called, um, the actor has to generate overlap events. And all of these like static meshes in the scene, by default, they don't generate overlap events. So if you want something to generate an overlap event, you have to click on it and say generate overlap events. Um, any like collision you have in the game will automatically do this. But if it's just like a static mesh that's in the scene, it won't do this by default. So if you want the bullets to collide with something, it has to have generate overlap events set. And you can set that on any actor just by clicking on the actor and checking that little box. So now you can see if I go ahead and I try to shoot this box, um, it says destroyed at the top left and my bullets are getting destroyed. And of course you could add like a little puff of smoke or something, or maybe you want to damage the box, or you can do anything you want. Um, and you would just do that inside of here instead of printing. You would, you know, take the actor and damage it or do whatever you want. Obviously that's very specific on your game, so I'll leave that. Um, up to you on exactly what you want to do. All right, so the only other things we could really add to this to make it a little bit better is we could add a muzzle flash to our gun, and we could also add an animation to the player to give him a little kick whenever he shoots. So those are the last things that we'll do. So to do the muzzle flash, I think that's probably um, on the easier side of the two. Um, we're actually going to create a class for that, a really simple blueprint class. Uh, I guess we'll just add it next to the bullet. So make a new blueprint and of type actor and call it bp underscore muzzle flash. And inside of here, we're just going to add a point light to represent the light of the muzzle flash. I'm going to change the intensity down to like a thousand so it's a little bit more reasonable. And I'm going to set the color to a more like muzzle flashy looking color. Not sure exactly what that is, but something like yellowish, maybe. And we can also set it to static, because it's uh, the light's not going to move. It's just a one-time flash. So it will save on performance a little bit. And compile and save that. And we also, if we come up here to class defaults, I think, and you search for life. Yeah, so the initial lifespan. This is how long the actor is going to survive for. By default, it's zero, which means it's going to survive forever unless you delete it. But we only want this muzzle flash to last for like, you know, 0.5 seconds or something really small, maybe even less than that. But this is going to be some really small number. That's how long the light is going to last for. So if we come back and inside of our gun, um, or not our gun, inside of our, yeah, inside of our gun. So inside of the fire, after we spawn the bullet, we want to spawn the muzzle flash. So spawn actor from class. And we will search for muzzle flash. 
And the spawn transform is again going to be the barrel of the gun, which is this guy down here. So we'll drag that over. It's just this get socket rotation, right? And yeah, I think that's really all we need to do. So we compile and we save this and we run it and we go and we pick up a gun. Come over here so we can see it better. You can see every time I shoot, it does a little muzzle flash. Um, one thing that I want to change, you can see it has some like weird shadow effect going on. And I think the best way to fix that is just to disable shadows for this light. I think it looks way better that way. So if we go to the muzzle flash, really easily just click on point light, search for shadows, and uncheck this cast shadow checkbox. So now if we go ahead and we run this, you can see we won't get any of these weird visual artifacts. It looks as you would expect it to look, more or less. Um, you can also do things like adding an actual like particle effect to the end of the gun to give it even more of a flash. But again, I don't want to make this tutorial like super long, so I'm trying to keep things as simple and as generic like as possible. So the very last thing is like setting up a animation to play whenever you fire the gun. So to do that, um, there actually already is an animation for us. So if you go back to the animation starter pack and you search for, I think it's called fire maybe. Yeah, so fire, rifle, iron sights. So if you open up this animation, you can see it has it like kicking his shoulder back a little bit as if the gun is actually firing. So this is the one we want to use and we want to play whenever he fires. So to do that, we need to move it to a animation montage. So right click on it and say create, and we want to create an animation montage. And I'll just call it am underscore, um, I'm actually going to call it am underscore, I guess we'll just call it fire. Yeah, am underscore fire. So if we double click on this, um, you can see by default, the selection name is default. Let's name this something a little bit more meaningful. We'll just call it fire. And that's pretty much all we need to do there. We can file and save that. And now that we have it inside the animation blueprint, we can access it really easily in our animation blueprint. So go to the animation blueprint, go to animation graph, and we need to add it um, somewhere inside of here. And the place we want to add it is in between here and here. So to do that, we need to make use of something called uh, layered blend per bone. And what this is going to do is it's going to let us blend um, this normal walking animation, like our locomotion, with that shooting animation. Because if you think about it, uh, if he's walking and he shoots, you still want his lower half to be walking, and you want his upper half to be doing the fire animation. So if you don't blend it, then it will just, his feet will go back to that standing still whenever you try to fire, even if you're walking. So we need to make use of this. So to do that, um, we're gonna go ahead and cache this. So alt left click to disconnect. And we're just gonna cache this, which is essentially just saving it as, as a variable. So we'll say cache and it says new save cache pose. And I'm just gonna rename this to loco cache. So we can use this loco cache by just right clicking and say use, uh, use cache pose loco cache. So that's gonna be our base pose. And the blend pose, the one we want to blend with, is our shooting animation. So if you right click and you search for um, montage, so there's this option here, slot and default slot. So click on that. So this is how you slot in a montage in an animation graph. Um, so we just want to go ahead and hook that up. And it's already set to our default slot, which is the one we want. And it needs an input pin from source. And it's again going to be our local cache. So you can hook that up. And that will then go into here. So now we're essentially, we're doing our locomotion animation and we are blending that with our shooting animation. Now, one thing we need to specify is for this layered blend per bone, if you click on it, um, it ne you need to tell it which bone you want it to blend at. Because we want to blend it essentially um, somewhere in the middle of the body, right? So if you look at the skeleton here and you look at, come up to the top here, you can see he has a pelvis, and that's directly at his root. And as you work up the spine, it gets higher and higher. And I figured, um, I did some testing, I think the best one to use for this is spine 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the selected bone names. And so that's where it will be doing the blending. And if you kind of rotate this, you can get an idea of what this bone is. It's the bone that controls, you know, this part of the spine. Right? So 
if we come back to our animation graph and we expand this, we can go ahead and add one. So click add and the bone name, you can paste in there our spine underscore zero three and compile and save that. Now we have to actually play this montage from somewhere. So we want to do that um, from the player when he actually fires. So we'll go back to the player, go to the event graph. So this is when he fires, um, we tell the gun to fire and then we want to actually play the montage directly after that. So there's a handy function for that, just called play anim montage, oops, anim montage. And it's asking you for the montage you want to use. And of course that's going to be our aim fire montage and the selection name is fire. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and run this now. Um, it actually will play, but you won't be able to see it. So you can see if I fire, um, it doesn't actually look like he is firing the gun. And that's because of the blend times. So if we go ahead and we look at this animation, um, let's see. If we open up AM Fire, you can see, let's go ahead and pause this. So the animation montage is, if you look down here, it says 0 0.233 seconds long. So the animation is 0.23 seconds long. And if you look over here on the left under the blend times, it has a blend time of 0 0.25 seconds and 0 0.25 seconds for the in and the out. So it's blending the whole time the animation is playing, so you don't actually see the animation. So you need to set these to something a little bit smaller. I'm going to use 0 0.05. So if we go ahead and we play it now, and we grab our gun, and we aim down sights, and we fire, 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 fire. You can see our character is now um, playing that animation. If we crouch, he'll do it as well. Um, but we have one little problem when he crouches. You can see he does like a weird thing. Um, and yeah, you might want to move the camera down when he crouches as well, but um, obviously that's something you can do in your own game. But yeah, he does like some weird, he looks to the right. Um, to fix that, it's super simple. Just go to the animation graph and click on layer bone for bone and check this mesh space rotation. And if we do it now, I'm gonna move the camera down a little bit just cause it looks kind of ridiculous when it's that high, I think. Down a little. Okay, so now if we crouch and we shoot, you can see he doesn't do that crazy ridiculous turn thing anymore, which is good. And I think everything at this point is working as intended. Obviously, you'll want to have a different animation for when it's walking. I just don't actually have one, but you would obviously want to get one for when he's walking without a gun. But you can see everything seems to work pretty good. Um, oh, the one thing we never did was switching guns. I don't know how I forgot that. Um, that's super simple, though, so we can do that real quick. So back in the event graph, we'll say add, not add custom event, um, add what's it called input action switch guns yeah that's what i wanted couldn't think there for a second so switching guns essentially all we want to do is we want to check the value of the current gun and we want to swap it so drag in the current gun we'll do a switch and so if it's primary then we want to set it to secondary and if it's secondary we want to set it to primary And then once we've swapped it, oops, primary, secondary, secondary, primary, yeah. And then after we've swapped it, we want to call our update gun attachments. So it updates, you know, where the guns are attached at. And then that should be all we need for that. So if we go ahead and run this, and we pick up the M4, and we press our Q button, you can see it switches to be on our matter back. I pick up the AK, go to my hand, and we can switch these as we want. So yeah, I think now we are actually done with everything. Um, obviously, there's a lot of room to add stuff to this. It's not like a fully finished game at this point, but this tutorial is already pretty long as is, and this should give you a really nice starting point on figuring out you know, exactly how you want to implement guns in your game. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. But with that being said, thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.